Hi, and thanks for tuning in about the latest developments in our open source project, Shiny Semantic. Let me briefly introduce myself. My name is Dominik Szymiński and I'm open source tech leader at Upsilon, where I work since 2017. I'm quite active member of our community. I belong to the local groups in Warsaw and now in Cardiff. With my friends from Cardiff, we organized two years ago a Saturday conference here. Uh, I really enjoy contributing to open source. So we can find my comments in uh, Shiny related packages like Shiny Semantic, Shiny Internationalization that I also co-authored. But recently I created RStudio add-in called To Do R that helps you to discover all places of your code that require your closer attention like to do, bug and so on. Uh, at the bottom, you can find my online presence. So if you'd like to learn more about my work or connect with me, feel free to do so. With that, we can move on to the gist of my presentation. But before I focus on the semantic part, let me make sure that we are all on the same page. So as some of you might know, Shiny is an R package that is excellent for interactive data visualization purposes. In the background, it uh, translates this R code into HTML code that can be understood by the browsers. So uh, in fact, those two code snippets basically generate the same component, slider input, but as you may notice, the one on the top is way shorter and much easier to understand tools that really contribute to the development time. In general, I identified four key components that contributed to the Shiny success. So first of all, Shiny combines uh, data analysis power of R with nice visualization options. As you might know, in R, there is like a bunch of packages that help you to create nice looking charts, graphs, maps, and so on. And typically they are easily integrated with Shiny. Interactivity is very easy to understand through reactivity. If you want to learn more about that, there's a number of excellent uh, blog posts at our studio website. All of that contributes to the speed of development. So building your first proof of concept is rather a matter of hours rather than, than days. All that is wrapped in elegant and nicely looking user interface. And uh, this is actually a consequence of using Bootstrap under the hood of Shiny. And Bootstrap is an open source toolkit that comes with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript code and helps you to quickly prototype your ideas and build nicely looking web widgets. So instead of reinventing the wheel and styling your button on your own, you can rely on the expertise and knowledge of thousands of developers that contributed to Bootstrap already. So here is an example of the components that you can get in Shiny very easily in just a few lines of code. Uh, as you can see, you can get slider input, select input. There is a whole bunch of them that you can discover yourself in a Shiny gallery. To convince you how easy it is, here I put 10 lines of code that create this little widget on the right hand side. But the speed of development comes with a cost. So most Shiny developers don't really bother with changing and customizing the style. That results that when you see a lot of Shiny apps, you will notice that most of them look basically the same. Thus we decided to extend Shiny possibilities with Shiny Semantic that provides an alternative backend for the user interface library. So Shiny Semantic is a wrapper for formatting UI rather than semantic. That discrepancy will be explained in a second, but basically it provides bindings for JavaScript and CSS code and, and fonts. Uh, theme supports many predefined elements that work well with a Shiny syntax. Shiny Semantic is fully open source project. We collected already more than 300 GitHub stars on uh, and, and 
21 developers contributed to the project. The latest stable release was actually pushed on Quran this year, version 0.4.2. So feel free to check it out on our GitHub repository and, and uh, documentation. As I mentioned, uh, Shiny Semantic was first released in 2016, uh, but the backend library it relied on Semantic UI lost its support in 2018. However, the users liked it so much that they decided to create a community fork that they renamed Fomantic. We decided to stick to the original name for historical reasons. Fomantic is an excellent development framework that helps to create beautiful, responsive layouts using human-friendly HTML. Indeed, when you look at this little code snippet, it will be very easy for you to understand what it tries to achieve without any web development expertise. Moreover, Fomantic comes with intuitive JavaScript code that really simplifies the debugging process with themes and it has MIT license. When we are building Shiny Semantic, we had three critical points in our minds. So first of all, we didn't want to add any overhead such that we deliver results at the same pace or even faster than standard Shiny components. From the experience, I can tell you that many of our clients were so impressed with uh, fresh looking semantic dashboards that they decided to skip graphic designer from the development process. And it is very easy to customize and create your own components with, uh, with shiny inputs. So here's a little demo of black theme and dashboard. Uh, where I wanted to show you how easy it is to integrate Fomantic look with, for example, leaflet library that you might know from R. In this more dynamic example, uh, we can render dynamically those like boxes with uh, ribbons that describe the content of particular box. And again, we can see uh, the nice integration with the Plotly library, as well as data table uh, that has a uh, style from Fomantic. But how Shiny Semantic works in practice? So I mentioned already that it attaches uh, external CSS, JavaScript, and font files. Those are stored on our cloud front to improve the loading speed, but you can switch it off uh, and store those locally. Uh, Shiny Semantic wraps the most popular uh, semantic components that you can find on Fomantic uh, documentation website. You can easily extend them and create your own components from, but also you can create them from scratch. Uh, the inputs are easily integrated with, with, with Shiny. We also try to optimize performance of certain uh, inputs. Starting your development with Shiny Semantic is very straightforward. So you need to import the library first, and then, for example, you replace the UI uh, with Semantic Page that is a function that uh, is uh, like a skeleton of your UI, but it also attaches all the libraries needed to render your uh, Fomantic website. So uh, how to create your own Fomantic components? There is a couple of options. So first of all, you can go to the Fomantic documentation. You can check the HTML code for the component you are interested in. It. You can translate it into Shiny-like syntax in R, and that should render exactly the same component as in Fomantic documentation. If you, however, don't want to bother, we pre-implemented a number of components for you. Some of those you can actually know from, from a standard Shiny. So how to actually recognize what components uh, are compatible with like Shiny, what are not. So we decided to differentiate between two uh, styles of syntax. So if you want to use 
some uh, components or UI widget that you know from Shiny, you need to search for this like camel case syntax, wherever if you want to find some Shiny semantic specific component, then you'd rather use this uh, snake case syntax. For more information on how to use Shiny Semantic Components, I refer you to our documentation website where you can find a number of uh, tutorials and references to particular functions. They all come with like little examples that you can copy and adjust for your needs. If you'd like to instead to see uh, some components before you use them, then feel free to go to our demo website where you can find actually the live examples with little code snippets that again, you can just copy, change and, and play with. To show you how easy it is to uh, switch from Shiny to Shiny Semantic for certain components, uh, here we prepared a little demonstration. So most of those, uh, most of those components, namely numeric input, action button, and select input, have their equivalents in Shiny Semantic. This is not always the case due to different philosophy behind Bootstrap and Fomantic, but a lot of the, there is a lot of overlap here. Uh, another interesting feature uh, of uh, Shiny Semantic is so-called grid. So we appreciate that a lot of us is rather data scientists than skilled web developers. So very often we get lost in building a strict hierarchy of uh, what goes where in our web application. So grid is a remedy for that. With two simple functions, namely grid template and grid, you can, in the step one, create the layout of your uh, application where you define the places where you want to position your UI elements. And then in the second step, you can style them and then assign to those particular places uh, what needs to sit uh, in there. Feel free to check a grid in our tutorial. Uh, semantic dashboard is what Shiny dashboard is for regular Shiny. So uh, this is a dashboard, it helps you to create dashboards with semantic components. And dashboard is a more complex Shiny applications, typically with multiple sub pages organized into header, sidebar and main content. Recently, we released an update of uh, semantic dashboard on CRAN. However, it is still in a heavy development. We are trying to improve uh, UX to be more shiny dashboard like. However, still you can achieve quite impressive results with uh, semantic dashboard. So here I added a link to the blog post tutorial that you can refer to. And you can also see here a nice integration with uh, Plotly and a data table. So now let's move on to some examples of how Shiny Semantic can be used in practice. So first of all, I want to show you an app that presents FIFA 19 data. And that work was done as an entry to Shine Semantic POC contest organized by Epsilon and RStudio. And my work was inspired by this app created by Ekran Bayar, who used standard Shiny dashboard. I, on the other hand, decided to utilize Shiny Semantic features. Uh, as you can see, I moved the sidebar to the top navigation panel. Here you can see uh, how to create nicely looking model dialogue. Each sub page I decided to split into two columns and every column is uh, further broken down into several boxes that contain uh, various data visualizations. Uh, that also shows you how easy it is to integrate Shiny Semantic with different visualization packages such as Plotly or ggplot. Uh, in the other sub pages, 
you can recognize some uh, components that you know from standard Chinese, such as select input. Uh, all those like lists here are rendered dynamically together with those uh, tab set panels. Uh, every tab set panel contains data table that also has a shiny semantics skin. Last but not least, here we can see how nicely and easy it is to integrate Shiny Semantic with map visualization. Next, I want to show you this a little demonstration of how easy it is to translate a Shiny app to Shiny Semantic application. So as a challenge, we took this water quality dashboard from our studio gallery and we gave ourselves just an hour to recreate that dashboard from scratch. We used uh, shiny semantic components uh, and it was like really easy and fast to recognize all the elements from the native application and translate it to the uh, shiny semantic app that has nice and fresh new look. Epsilon open source packages family is not only limited to the semantic related packages. We have as well in our portfolio Shiny Router, Shiny Info, Shiny Internationalization or Shiny Worker. Let's start from Shiny Router. This is a minimalistic router for your Shiny apps. It helps you to split your app into several sub pages with their own unique URL address. But not only that, Shiny Router comes with URL parametrization that helps you to add to your URL address parameter to value mapping. And then with one simple function call, you can retrieve that information and for example, use it to populate your UI input. Next, we have Shiny Info. So I very often struggle when I debug my Shiny applications because I need to switch between the logs, console and UI. At the same time, very often I have as simple problems as I'm on the wrong branch or I'm using a different version of the application than the one that is available to my client. Shiny Info helps you to display all kinds of diagnostic information in one of the corners of your app. Adding this information is as simple as a one line uh, function call that specifies what information you want to display and where. You can display almost anything from Git information, version of your app, or the values of reactive variables. Did you ever work with applications that need, needed to be translated to several languages? We did. And for that specific reason, we designed Shiny Internationalization that makes multi-language app creation simple. Uh, it, the process consists of two simple steps. In the first step, you need to prepare your translation file. And this is usually the work that is dedicated to linguists or translator. Then you need to simply surround your expressions that need to be translated by a translator tag. How does it work in practice? Here is an example of simple CSV translation file that translates from English to Dutch. Then in your R shiny code, you just add those like T or translate methods where you put the key uh, language that you want to translate. Now switching between different language versions is as simple as calling the method sense, set translation language. Last but not least, we have shiny worker, which is a new kit on the block. And this package helps you delegate heavy computation tasks to separate processes such that it does not freeze your app. The package is still in its infancy. We just released that on CRAN before the conference. Here we can see example of such a process. So we run a job that takes around five seconds, but uh, app does not freeze. We can still use, for example, the slider on the left. 
With that, I want to conclude and invite you to visit Shiny Tools website that we created recently. And it contains all the information that you need about our Epsilon open source family. You will find the references to the documentation and live demo examples. Finally, uh, I want to remind you that we have a few openings at Epsilon, so I highly encourage you to visit our careers page. Thank you very much for your attention.